it was um, one of the um, the most um, watched televised events of this week, the presidential debate between, uh, of course, former President Trump and current Vice President Kamala Harris. But just a little bit of a sporting comparison, because I was um, chatting off air with our sports correspondent, John O'Donnell, and he says, why is it that New Zealanders are so fascinated in this, we don't have skin in the game. Uh, my sports metaphor was, well, it's kind of like watching um, India and Pakistan play cricket. It's going to be an interesting match, even though we don't have a team in the game, as it were. And, hey, I know a lot of New Zealanders so uh, fascinated by US politics it's as if they get the opportunity to vote. Thanks for the thoughts and comments that have been texted through to the studio, but uh, now going to uh, Professor Robert Patman, Professor of International Relations at the University of Otago. Robert, kia ora, good morning. Kia ora, good morning, Andrew. It was fascinating, and even though we don't get to vote, just the the sure, the, the, the pure spectacle of mm. the debate, and, and very different than the, than the first presidential debate with Joe Biden, of course. Well, I don't think the contrast could have been greater. Uh, Kamala Harris took the initiative right at the outset, strode across uh, the podium, shook hands vigorously with Donald Trump and said, let's have a good debate, yep. uh, indicating uh, that she was going to try to, where she could, dominate the space. And I thought that set a pattern. Uh, she was determined to keep Mr. Trump off balance. And um, I, I think from an early stage, Many of her observations were uh, characterised by calculated barbs, yeah. which uh, Mr. Trump, he, he more than took the bait. Mm. He, he bit on it vigorously. And I think he was, as American political pundits like to say, off message yeah. as a result for much of his answers. Of course, uh, President Trump has um, done this many times beforehand. In some ways, he's the uh, the more uh, seasoned player. The first presidential debate for Kamala Harris, although of course uh, a, a background uh, in law, so um, so certainly used to um, to taking it to her opponent in that regard. But um, in terms of uh, the outcome. Is it clear? I mean, different people have different opinions on it. It's certainly perhaps not as cut and dried as the last presidential debate. Uh, but but people with a specific uh, political views already locked in are claiming different results from this debate. What's your thoughts? Well, I think that Carmela Harris definitely had the edge. And um, I, I thought the, sum, the two closing statements summarised that. Mr. Trump spent much of his closing vision statement uh, responding to what he'd heard yeah. and denying uh, some of the charges. Um, Camilla Harris set out what she, you know, uh, um, I thought basically to summarize, I think Camilla Harris had a strategy. She prepared well. She showed her, her composure. Uh, she... I think was very calculated in her gestures, but it was effective. She came across as someone who wasn't intimidated by Mr. Trump yep. and um, seemed to enjoy the occasion. And uh, uh, it, it's what I, I, I again, I, I think his base, Mr. Trump's base, will see nothing in that debate to make them desert Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think we must be absolutely clear about that. And, and he's got quite a substantial base of support in the US. I think the crucial question, Andrew, is whether the uncommitted American voters, the ones who switch between Republicans and Democrats, how they viewed that contest. And yeah. I don't think Mr. Trump uh, really set out a clear vision to win them over. But, you know, it's a still plenty of time to go. I mean, we're still <laughs> a couple of months out from the election. Exactly. So uh, this is just a snapshot in time. It's a bit disappointing they're not going to have a follow-up, by yeah. all count. Yeah. Now, yeah. is this the sort of thing that does move the needle, in your opinion? As you say, there's 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 people who are already locked down on who their vote is. But for uh, for the undecided voter, is this the sort of thing that makes a difference? Because uh, looking at the debate from my point of view, there was not lo a lot of policy 
There was not a lot of, no. hey, here's some concrete plans. Yes, some from Camilla saying, hey, we're going to give this tax rebate or, you know, the average U.S. citizen, the middle class are going to be slightly better off because of these policies, but not a lot of substance uh, and and probably more name calling than substance. True, but on the issues like Ukraine, yeah, I think there was some confirmation of prior positions in the debate, and on Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump resisted a question which was uh, asked several times by one of the moderators: Do you want Ukraine to win and prevail against? the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And Mr. Trump said no. He didn't say no. He didn't answer the question. Yeah. He basically said, I want peace. Mm. Uh, and I think the peace in question Mr. Putin wants is eastern Ukraine. Yeah. So Mr. Trump said that he'll facilitate peace within 24 hours, even even before he becomes president. But uh, before he formally takes up the position in the White House, he anticipates he can do a deal with 24 hours. Of course, this is a reference to Mr. Trump's uh, negotiating skills, mm -hmm. um, which he's not modest about, yeah. but he believes that he can settle the whole deal in 24 hours. I'm very skeptical about that because I, I think it will be delusional to think that Mr. Zelensky can cede 20% of his country to the Russians and survive politically at home. Yeah. And I think he's got no intention of doing that. When it comes to international politics, because it was a there was a period of time focusing in what happened in Afghanistan, what's currently happening in Ukraine and and Israel and Gaza as well, but the average U.S. citizen, the average voter in the U in the U.S., do they care about such things? I mean, when we look at the global picture, yes, uh, who wins the presidency affects. Uh, international relations and international foreign policy from the U.S. But for the average undecided voter, is that going to make a difference? Do you think? I think you're absolutely right. I think the priorities for most American voters, the bread and butter stuff will be the economy. Yep. And however, I do think foreign policy has ratcheted up in terms of importance compared with other presidential elections. And the okay. reason is because there is no consensus on the Ukraine situation. Mm -hmm. Many Americans seem to be deeply polarized, either fervently in support of Zelensky and saying we can't take a step back and draw parallels with the West selling out to uh, Britain and France when they effectively gave up Czechoslovakia to Nazi Germany in 1938, yeah. people making those sort of parallels. On the other hand, those like Mr. Trump saying, look, this is a waste of American taxpayers' money. Uh, I can get a deal with Putin. Uh, what, while it's not spoken, at, you know, essentially, uh, there'll be a, a land for peace deal. Yeah. Um, so... That I, I think that is, you know, um, Mr. Trump's position is a departure from previous American foreign policy mm -hmm. on the Ukraine, and I think it will be a subject of some discussion. I don't think it'll be a top-ranking issue. Another issue, though, Andrew, which is possibly even more potent in American politics, is Gaza. Yeah, with a lot of disaffected young people. Um, and this, you know, the Democrats probably have a bit to do to convince those young people and also some of the, I think, about 55 members of the Democratic Party itself who are not happy with Biden's policy towards Gaza. So uh, I thought that Camilla Harris didn't really, she, it was interesting. She basically indicated there would be a difference of emphasis without actually indicating there would be a substantive change in I mean, policy. This is the challenge for the incumbent. Although we have a change of, of candidate, it's still the same regime. A lot of the, the problems that the country faces and a lot of the problems we're dealing with internationally, they have mm. all happened under the Democrat watch, as it were. Yes. The problems that America now faces are problems that, uh, that have happened in the last few years. When it comes yeah. down to, I suppose, the average American, uh, it's it's economic stupid i mean the, to use that famous famous quote again oh, yeah. uh promising a more prosperous america for uh, particularly the undecided voter is it going to swing on that i think i think economics is going to loom very large and both sides seem to have live in parallel universes when it comes to the economy because yeah. um the biden administration is very proud of its economic record whereas according to mr trump it's the worst econ economy 
they rec- you know he can recall yeah um and both cite figures to back their cases up i think the biden administration um did uh inherit a pretty tough situation economically mr trump did very well until the first year of covid yeah and that the economy was rocked by that in the nine in 2020 mm-hmm. uh, but uh one thing uh, unemployment's come down under mr biden but inflation has come down but maybe not quickly enough to yeah. affect many americans there's a widespread complaint in american american families but um particularly young families that the the cost of living has gone through the roof mm-hmm. uh, many people complain about food um, and grocery bills being up by 20 percent compared with when mr biden came in so it's going to it looks like it's going to be a neck and neck race yeah i mean the other- um, and i'm i'm not sure the debate's going to change that um I, I do think though coming back to our early discussion that crucial constituency that which both sides are keen to win over is middle america the particularly those middle americans who are uncommitted and switch mm. and because they're going to be 10 or 15 percent of the vote um there comes a point where both sides have to move beyond their base yep. to win this election the other big issue, I think, is uh, immigration policy, and this is uh, th- th- there's no shades of grey in some ways on this one, uh, but, and whether or not there is enough people in that undecided voter who have a sympathy or an empathy towards uh, recent immigrants to uh, the United States or for those who fear that, uh, you know, there's wave after wave of immigrants taking all our, all our jobs, eating our cats and dogs, as uh, President Trump yeah, well, that, uh, hilariously that, that said. By the lo- that was denied, wasn't it? Exactly. By the local exactly. But pushing, I suppose, xenophobic buttons of people who think we need somebody like Trump to stop all of these immigrants coming into our country. I mean, it seems ridiculous when he says it out loud, but that might be quite an effective strategy uh, for a constituency who has have genuine fears in that area, even if it's not based in reality. Yes, but America's culture is different from New Zealand. America's built as a nation of immigrants. Mm-hmm. Mr. Trump himself is going back several generations from Germany. Yeah. Um, and Kamala Harris. So many Americans have been, there, if you trace their family ancestry, are from somewhere else. And, and many Americans are proud that every year they're taking a million legal migrants. Yeah. Um, so it's the illegal ones they're worried about. Um, Mr. Trump did have four years to deal with this problem. Mm-hmm. And also, there's something else that's beginning to creep into this campaign. He personally intervened to scuttle a bypass, a bipartisan deal, which was worked out under the Trump administration with the Republican Party in Congress to come up with a bipartisan once and all solution to this this problem, yeah. the, the, the immigration, the, the, the migration problem. So and Mr. Trump scuttled that deal because he thought it'd be to his political advantage, apparently. So <laughs> he needs that, to could be... yet, that could yet haunt him because a lot of Republicans were very upset about that. Senior Republicans like Mitch McConnell, for example, exactly. were not happy. That he he believed, he predicted it would rebound yeah. against the Republican. And, and uh, hey, he's still the presidential um, candidate, he of is. course. And for him to appear the strong man, it's it, it's quite the contrast between uh, Kamala Harris, of course, who is the daughter of immigrants from different parts of the world to the United States. Whatever mm. happens, it is going to be an interesting couple of months. Robert, appreciate your insight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima Studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.